Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my online program, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. If you would like to learn more about what it's like to work with me and to see if Irresistible You, my signature online program, is a good fit, sign up for one of my free confidence clarity calls. The link is located in the show notes below. Let's get started. Welcome back to this week's Irresistible You podcast episode. First things first, I'm going to just address the elephant in the room here. It might sound a little bit different today. Um like more, like I can actually hear kind of an echo. Um, And that's because I'm in my office at home and my home office is almost completely bare bones. For those of you that don't know, we just sold our house that we've been in for nine years. We just are in the process of purchasing a new home. We're under contract on both. So fingers crossed um, and prayers that everything goes as planned. But my office is totally bare. Everything is basically gone because we had to remove everything, stage the house so we could get it sold. We sold the house in less than two days. It was so, like, it's just crazy how the market is, especially where we are in Virginia Beach. It's super competitive. But anyway, that is why it sounds a little bit off in here is because my office is just about empty so the sound might be bouncing a little bit. So I do apologize if it sounds a little strange today. Okay, so today's topic is going to be what to do when you see yourself in a picture and your first thought is, oh my God, I'm so fat and gross. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So before we get into the what to do, I want to share a little story with you um, that happened actually just recently, as in yesterday. Yesterday was Mother's Day. And For those of you that are new to the podcast or you missed my announcement and you don't know this, I am currently almost 14 weeks pregnant with my second, and we went to do our pictures yesterday because everything going on, can't spend time with my own mom, we can't go to their house um, with the quarantine and, and such, and so we decided hey, let's just get dressed up. I needed that for my self-esteem, y'all. That's a whole other topic we'll get into in a second. But I was like, I just need to go get glammed up, put like all my over-the-top makeup on, get my dress on, all that kind of stuff, and let's go take these pictures. So I had bought myself a dress and my daughter a dress and then those like um, smoke cannons that you see people do for a gender reveal. I had bought all that right when I found out what the gender is. Yes, I know what the gender is. I have known for... A while now <laughs> and I'm using my words carefully because I don't want to accidentally say uh, what the baby is <laughs> and so we haven't had time to go do our gender reveal pictures yet because of the whole house thing you know we had to get the house ready so we were doing a lot of work inside the home moving stuff yada 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 for like the last two weeks so anyway um, we're like let's just go do it today we don't have anything else to do the beaches are you know, the beaches are empty right now. You can go to the beach as long as you're walking or fishing. So I'm like, well, we're actually technically going for a walk and we're just taking pictures. So anyway, um, it was a gorgeous day. It was like high sixties, maybe 70 sunny. I was like, the pictures are going to be great. Well, I get dressed, get my daughter dressed, which getting a three-year-old dress is a whole nother thing. (laughs) Um, my husband even matches us. We got Chewy. He's ready to go. And we get where we're going, and as soon as we pulled into the parking lot, my husband's like, I don't think this is going to work. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I could just see the wind. Somehow, clearly, we forgot to check the wind. (laughs) And I look at the phone, and sure enough, it was like, the wind was only like 8 miles an hour, which is no big deal, with gusts up to 25. I'm like, oh, my God. So I get out of the car. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know. And I'm like, let's just try. Let's just try, you know. And, of course, the more you walk towards the ocean over the dunes, it's going to get worse when you're by the water. And my daughter, oh, my gosh, she has on, like, a sleeveless dress. (laughs) 
I'm like worst mom of the year. I don't have a jacket or a hoodie to put her in. So I give her the beach blanket that we brought so we could lay all of our stuff down. And she's got it like wrapped around her. She can't see because the blanket is around her head. And we make it over the dune right to the beach. And we're like, this is such a fail. Like this is like you could see the sand like in the distance where it's like blowing in the wind. Like this is such an epic fail right now. (laughs) I'm like, can you even imagine shooting off these uh, smoke cannons right now? Like it's not going to happen. So my husband's like, we just put all our stuff down. And Frank's like, let's just try. And he starts trying to take a few pictures of us. And he got a couple cute ones to be honest with you, but it was so miserable. And my daughter, Kat, bless her heart. She was trying so hard. She was such a good sport. And, I mean, all of this happened in, like, less than five minutes when we just – even Chewie's, like, trying to, like, bury himself under the blanket because of the, the wind is just too much. We're like, that's it. We got to pack it up. We got to go. And right as we're packing it up to go, um, <laughs> my daughter, I guess, got a ton of sand in her eyes. So she's now screaming, can't open her eyes, has herself wrapped in a blanket, and can't walk a straight line. So my husband picks her up. I got the dog. I got the bag. We're out of here. Like, this is such a fail. <laughs> um, you know, and I just, I ha- I actually just let it go. I wasn't, like, all that pissed about it. I'm like, whatever. You know, it's just not, it's just not meant to be today. We'll have to just try it somewhere else where it's not windy. But that's not really the look I'm going for. I really wanted to do my gender reveal pics on the beach. And that's where we did my daughter's when, when we found out what she was going to be. So anyway, that's what I wanted. So we're like, you know what? It's just not going to work today. We have to do a different day. And I'm like, fine, I'm good with that. We'll, we'll do it. I, I really wanted to get it over with just because we had taken the time to get dressed up and all the things. But it's like, it's, it's just sometimes we have things that are planned and we, we expect things to go a certain way and to look a certain way. And then they don't. And when they don't look a certain way, or they don't go as planned, that's when we get pissed off, disappointed, mad, all of the above. So I was cool with it. I was like, yeah, I'm a little disappointed at the weather. It's nobody's fault, but, like, let's get out of here. So the rest of the day just became kind of a shit show, to be honest with you. (laughs) But that is not the whole point of the podcast. The point of my podcast today was talking about those pictures and how sometimes – you know, we have an image in our head of what we want a picture to look like or what we what we think we're supposed to look like. And then we get the picture back and we're like, what the fuck? Like, I don't look like that. Is that really what I look like? Oh, my God, I'm so fat and disgusting. Oh, my. And all these thoughts start to come back in our head and like flood the way that that we're thinking about ourselves. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today with you guys, because you know, the pictures that we did take yesterday, and I mean, this was all within like a couple of minutes. They were more like test pictures just to see like, is this even going to work? Can we take the pictures here? You know, trying to, trying to just, just to get a vibe and a gauge on that. They were not intended to be like, okay, these are the actual pictures that we're going to like frame on the wall and share on social media. Because clearly we weren't able to get those done yesterday at all. And when we got to the car, actually, I kind of glanced at them really quickly on the beach. And then when we got in the car, I was able to look, I was able to really look at them. And when I looked at them, that feeling came over me for a second of just feeling mortified. I thought, oh my God, this can't be me. I'm like, two months ago, I didn't look like this. And here I am, here I am again, like packing on the pounds. I don't really have that many rolls on my back. Do I? No. Like just all those thoughts came flooding back. And when we got in the car and the temper tantrum slowed down and we got the sand out of our eyes and everybody just kind of had to take a breath. And, you know, it was just, it was just one of those moments where everything was going to shit. And if you have young children, you totally understand what I'm saying here. (laughs) Sometimes you just have days like that and it's okay. But once we got back in the car and I just stayed quiet for a while because I was just really trying to redirect and process my thoughts because those feelings were coming up for me. And here's what I'm going to say to you. You're like, but Amy, you teach this. This is what you do for a living. Like you teach women how to you know, improve their body image and be confident. Yes, I do. 
And the majority of the time I am confident and I feel good in my skin and I don't give a fuck what you think about me and my weight and anything like that. But that doesn't mean that these feelings don't still happen because they do. And even when you, you know, you join my program and you do the work, that doesn't mean that those feelings never happen again. Same thing is like just because you lose weight doesn't mean you never have these feelings again because you will. And I just had to kind of sit with myself and process and really think about it. And that I'm going to share with you um, here in a little bit about how to do that when you see that picture. Because there are things that you can do. You don't have to think what you're thinking about yourself. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll get into that in just a second. But like those feelings were coming up, like they were coming up for me and they were coming up really strong. And, you know, I had to tell myself like, but these are just like test pictures. These aren't even like, these weren't even supposed to be the ones like we were just trying to see if we could even do this today with the wind and clearly we could not because it was awful (laughs) the hair blowing everywhere like it was just awful you guys it was like sometimes honestly sometimes my life most of my life since I was young I feel like I'm in a comedy sitcom and like just some of the things that happen is like I can't I can't even make this shit up it was just really a big ridiculous shit show that was going on And I was, so I kind of was just like, one was with like, this isn't going to happen today. This is not how things are going to go. This is not going the way that I wanted them to go. And it's fine. I'll get over it. That's fine. And then the weight thing and the body changes. And, you know, yes, I'm pregnant. So yes, my body is changing, but I also, so let's, let's just get into um, the hows because I don't want to share everything now because I feel like. Some of what I'm going to share is part of the how, like how do you look at a picture of yourself and not think, oh my God, I'm so fat and disgusting. All right. So I know all of you have had that moment where you either get tagged in a picture, oh gosh, social media, where we get tagged in that dreaded fat picture, or you know, you're like me, you're out taking photos on purpose, having like a little photo shoot with your family or your friends, and you see that picture of yourself and you're like, oh my God, right? Um... So a couple of things here. Let's just talk about when you have that feeling and it's that pit of your stomach, it washes over you, it feels humiliating, it feels, um, it just feels hopeless in the moment. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is like, it's like reality just slapped you in the face. Okay. Let's talk about what do you do when you have that feeling? Because I think a lot of you think that you don't have a choice, that you just feel the way you feel, think what you think, and that's the end of it. And that is not true. So the very first thing that you need to be able to do is you have to change the conversation with yourself. That conversation or that those thoughts that pop up for you, like, oh my God, look at you, you fat bitch. Like, you always are going to look like this. You're like, see, I told you you can't lose weight. See, I told you you're not hot. I told you you weren't sexy or irresistible. You're just always going to look like a fat blob. That conversation with yourself is optional. That is called the inner fat bitch chatter. And the inner fat bitch chatter is 100% optional. It doesn't mean it doesn't come up because it's going to come up because it's just the thoughts that come up for you. What you do with those thoughts is now up to you. And so for me, when I just had to get quiet on the way out and just like process what was going on, that was me changing the conversation with myself because that inner fat bitch chatter is 100% optional. And you're going to start thinking things that maybe you haven't thought in a long time or you thought that because you've lost weight, Because for a lot of you, you are on a weight loss journey. So you think, well, because I'm losing weight, I shouldn't feel this way anymore. And weight loss does not equate to I feel amazing about myself and I'm never going to have fat bitch chatter again. What you have to be able to do is you have to be able to change and redirect that conversation with yourself because that is optional. And I don't think a lot of you realize that when you say to yourself, I'm so fat and disgusting, I'll always be like this. We can change that. We can change that thought. We can change that conversation. And so for me, it was like, here's what was going on in my mind. It's like, yes, you have gained weight in the last three months. Yes, you have gained more weight in the last three months than you should be gaining with a pregnancy. And I'm going to be real with y'all, and that's going to be an episode for another day. 
you are growing a child, you are growing a human, you are gaining weight, you are not going to look like you did in February. And also, this is like a whole other like sidebar here, like, because we've been talking a lot about like plus size pregnancy. This is a whole other thing with plus size pregnancy is there's this weird uh, phase where it kind of like where you're between the first trimester and like halfway through the like to the second trimester where your belly is showing, but you just look really fat. And for those of you that have been plus size and pregnant, I think you know what I'm talking about. I was sharing this on my Instagram story the other night where you're gaining weight, but because you already have a stomach and a fat roll, you can't necessarily tell yet that it's a baby bump. It just looks like you're really fat. And I think, I, so the conversation in my mind was like, you're just at that place in your pregnancy where everything just looks like a big blob and that's okay. And then there's this beautiful thing that happens where all of your fat <laughs> and all of your baby like meshes together and becomes this little cute, hard tummy. <laughs> and I'm so waiting for that moment. And I remember it happening, happening with my daughter and I'm just waiting for it to happen with this baby because I just want to look pregnant and not like big and fat. <laughs> and this is just the reality, guys. And so this is the stuff that's going through my mind of like, you're not who you were 20 years ago when you gained 100 pounds in less than six months. That is not who you are right now. You're gaining weight and your body is changing because uh, you're pregnant. And whatever your circumstance is, you have to change that conversation with yourself so that you're not sitting there battling the inner fat bitch and having these conversations where you're beating yourself up about what you look like. So let's just turn that around. Let's say that you're on a weight loss journey and you take a picture in the middle of your weight loss journey and your first thought is, oh my God, you fat pig. See, none of it's working. You have to change that around to say, it is working. Here's the progress that I've had. Here's the wins that I've had. Here's the actions that I'm taking. Here's how I'm showing up for myself every single day and the things that I'm doing. Because a picture doesn't tell the whole story. It's just one little snap and moment in time. Okay? And that actually is going to take me to number two. So let's segue into that. So the second thing that I want to share with you when you have that feeling is telling yourself that this picture and this weight that I am at the moment and the key word here is at the moment, doesn't define my entire life. And that was some of the thought work that I had to do was like, okay, yeah, I'm pregnant. I'm gaining weight. I'm the type of pregnant woman who even when I try to eat healthy and stay active, I'm going to gain a lot of weight. But this doesn't define who I am as a human being who I am as a business owner, who I am as a mom, a wife, a friend, all of those things, that doesn't mean I'm not good at those things. And that's what we tend to do sometimes is the minute we see ourselves and we think we look too fat, and that's the key thing too is we think we look too fat because we are our biggest critic. And so when you have those feelings, the first thing is to like think you're horrible at everything else in your life. And you need to realize that sometimes we just take shitty pictures. Like there's really shitty pictures that people have taken of even Beyonce. So let's keep that in mind that I don't care if you're one of the prettiest people in the world. Sometimes everybody takes a fat, ugly picture. It's all about angles. It's all about just Look at just even, I want you guys to realize for a second, okay, even people that are models for a living, do you ever watch like where they show like behind the scenes and you see the camera roll and there's like thousands of pictures it seems and they take one or two of those and put it in the magazine <laughs> and that's because it takes lots of shots to get the shot, and we are not professional models. We are not professional photographers. And we're over here beating ourselves up over some cell phone pictures. So I want you to think about that. It is literally one moment in time. And all of us take shitty pictures sometimes. I don't care how good you look. 
And so while you're trying to change the conversation with the inner fat bitch, I want you to also tell yourself this picture and this current weight at the moment doesn't define my life and doesn't define who I am. You know, and then I want to go back to what I said a minute ago, which is we think we look too fat. We think we look horrible. We think we look awful. My husband's looking at those, and I haven't said anything out loud yet, okay? And he's like, you look so beautiful. He's like, you're such a beautiful pregnant woman. And the the picture with my daughter and I, it's, it is, it's precious. And I was having a hard time seeing the experience. And I'm going to, that's going to be the next thing, um, is we are so focused on ourself and so focused on our own bullshit and our own, like our own interpretation of what's not okay with us or why we're not enough that we don't focus on the experience and the memory in the photo. My husband looks at those and he sees this, his beautiful pregnant wife and his beautiful little girl in a moment together. And I think we need to do better looking at pictures, whether we took that picture today or whether it's a picture from 20 years ago. Let's shut that inner fat bitch down and let's focus on the experience and the memory. And that experience and the memory in that, in that moment in time is something my daughter will treasure forever. When I'm not here on this planet with her, she's not going to sit there and say, oh my God, my mommy was so fat. My mommy was so gross. She would never say that and she would never think that. And I want you to think about that with your own photos. What were you doing? Who's in the picture? Because that's your ego, guys. Sometimes we think, oh, that's your ego means you think too much of yourself or you think you're, you know, that's you being cocky or that you think you're too high and mighty. The ego is also the inner fat bitch. When we look at a picture and all we can focus on is ourself and how fat we are, how disgusting we are, how we're not good enough, da 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 and we tell this whole story inside of our head, that is your ego. And I want you to take your ego out of it, and I want you to focus on, but what was the experience and the memory in that moment? And how is me having a conversation with the inner fat bitch overshadowing the other people that were with me or the experience that I was having? Because that's what should actually matter. And so for me, I say, okay, this is where I'm at. Yes, I have gained too much weight in my first trimester. And it's so funny. I'm not even trying to do this on purpose, but I keep rolling into the next tip. (laughs) So let me just say what tip number four was. Tip number four is telling yourself, this is where I'm at. When you see yourself in a picture and you think you're too big or you don't like your weight or you don't like your size or you don't like the way your fat rolls are showing, Part of that conversation with yourself is, listen, I may not like those roles. And I sure as shit didn't like them roles I was seeing, y'all. I may not like these roles, but this is where I'm at today. And where I'm at today doesn't define the rest of my life. It doesn't define who I am as a person. And it doesn't define and say that this is where I have to stay. And that's the conversation for me being pregnant that I keep telling myself is like, you already know you're going to gain a lot of weight being pregnant. It's just the way your body is, even when you eat healthy. But this is where you're at. You have the rest of your life to get the weight off. But your body is doing whatever it needs to do to get this baby developed and healthy And you're going to enjoy the heck out of this pregnancy and you're going to embrace it. And you're not going to spend the next six months of it ripping yourself apart. And I want you to think about that with your weight too. For those of you that are on a weight loss journey and you see that picture and maybe you're not where you want to be, 
And maybe you're not even where you were. You're kind of in that in-between phase of like, I'm not at my goal, but I'm not at my highest weight anymore. You have to tell yourself, this is where I'm at in my journey. And I'm going to say this right now. When you get closer to your goal weight, you're going to appreciate those pictures more because you're able to see like the evolution of how you got to where you want to be. And what's really interesting about pictures is like, what's really, really interesting about pictures is say in that moment, it's fresh, it's raw, it just happened. This is where you're at right now, like this second, this minute, yesterday, whatever. It sometimes you feel like it's hard to appreciate that right now because it's like this is your current reality, okay? But you know how you look back at pictures and you go, wait a second, I remember when I thought I was so fat in this picture. And then you're thinking, I wish I was as fat as I was then. I wish I was as fat as I thought I was or whatever that thing that saying is. I'm going to totally screw it up, but you know what I'm saying. I want you to think about that. Because a lot of times, because we don't live in the moment, because we're listening to the inner fat bitch, we're living in this pretend fantasy world of when we lose the weight, when we are a size whatever, when we have the perfect body, then we'll appreciate our life. So you spend years and years and years of your life living in this future fantasy world that you're not even working towards. And you don't appreciate what's going on around you. You're not appreciating the experiences, the memories, the people that you're with. All you're focused on is yourself and your weight. And that's pretty damn selfish. But you've never thought of it that way. It's really, really selfish. Because you're focused on yourself, your weight, and not yourself in the way of taking care of yourself. You're focused on yourself in the sense of beating yourself up and having these inner fat bitch conversations that aren't helping you, that aren't making you grow, that aren't making you thrive, that aren't leading you towards an irresistible life. It's just keeping you stuck in the same old yo-yo diet, body hate, shame cycle, hamster wheel that you've been running on for the entire, like probably your whole life. And none of that is helpful. None of that is helpful. So you just have to tell yourself, like, this is where I'm at. And where I'm at isn't the finish line. Where I'm at isn't where the, everything stops and ends for me. This is just where I am. And that's literally all it is. So, put, so stop putting so much emphasis and meaning around what that means. It just means this is where I'm at. Where I'm at today, I have a couple extra fat rolls and I don't love them. Meeting yourself where you're at and telling yourself this is where you are doesn't mean you have to love the weight. You don't have to love the rolls. You don't have to love the way you look at the moment. It just means, all right, this is where I'm at. And you stop attaching so much meaning to what, because here's what you do is you look at that picture and you go, oh my God, I can't believe I'm so fat. I can't believe I have all those rolls. Oh, I'm such a disgusting pig. I know I can never lose weight. I'm always going to be fat. I'm always going to be gross. I suck at everything. This is why I'm, I'm, I'm not where I want to be. And you go down this rabbit hole of totally shit talking yourself, of making yourself feel worse and defining your entire life and all of your successes, all, all of your accomplishments on what you looked like in one fucking picture. How is that fair to yourself? How is that even fair to your future self? And we talk a lot about defining your future self. Who, who do, so when we define, what does it mean to become irresistible you? We do this inside of my program. We do this on week zero. So in week zero, I have the girls talk about who is your future self? Who is that version of you that's irresistible you? Who is she? What does she do? What does she think? What is her, like, we just, we go into a lot of detail around that. And we can refer back to it and say, okay, what would your future self say? Because here's the other side, like, 
when you lose your weight, when you lose your weight, let's say you get close to your goal or you reach your goal or you've lost a significant amount of weight, what I don't want you doing is looking back on your old fat pictures and beating yourself up because that is not growth. If you have lost your weight and you look back on photos where you were overweight and you are still having this same conversation with your old pictures and going, oh my God, she was so gross. I can't believe I look like that. I'm so ashamed. You haven't done the growth and you haven't done the the thought work to lose the emotional weight because if you still shit talk that woman, that means in your mind, you're only worthy and you're only good enough when you're at a certain size. So what happens when you gain your weight back because something bad happens? And let's just say you throw everything out the window and you gain your weight back. Or you have a baby and you gain all of your weight back. If you haven't healed that relationship with yourself before, that doesn't just go away. So I see this all the time. This is why I am not a fan of before and after story pictures. This is why I am not a fan of bullshit diets that, that sell themselves on these before and after stories. Because here's what happens, and I was guilty of this before in the past, where you lose a lot of weight, you get to your goal weight, and then all you do is shit talk the old pictures of yourself. I was so disgusting. I was so gross. I can't believe I look like that. I was blah, 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 blah. It's one thing to be able to look back on. So, so here's where you want to be. You want to be able to look back on your before pictures with empathy, not disgust. Because in this journey, you need to learn about who you are and why you were where you were. Weight gain is the symptom of something bigger. Weight gain is a symptom of something you're not trying to face, something that you're trying to avoid in most cases, okay? So I want you to get to a place where you can look back on your old overweight pictures with empathy, with compassion, with gratitude for for where you are today. That is when you know you've lost the emotional weight. That is when you know that you're not going backwards again. Where I'm going to throw up a red flag to you is when you're looking back on those pictures and your shit, like that inner fat bitch is like, oh girl, look at that fat pig. I can't believe you look like that. Oh my God, what were you thinking? You were so disgusting. You haven't done the work yet and you'll be right back where you were. Because if that's the, if that's the conversation that you're having with your old overweight pictures, you are putting your self-worth based on the number on the scale and the size in your jeans and what you look like. And you know you've done the work when you're able to separate the two and just say, all right, this is where I'm at. And that's kind of what I'm getting at here. I kind of I trailed off a, a little bit there. But for me, it's like being pregnant puts all of this under a microscope. Because yes, you're going to gain weight. That's normal. It's called you're healthy. <laughs> That's called being a healthy pregnant person. And that's my thing of like, okay, y'all, my fingers are swollen. I can barely get my wedding ring off on and off already. It's like everything's happening faster and more furiously than before. And I keep hearing that that's the case with number two. But this is where I'm at. And I'm not going to sit around inside the house and say, fuck it, I don't deserve to have pictures for this baby. I don't deserve to take gender reveal pictures because I'm too fat. That is your ego talking. Because it's not just about me. It's about the child that's in my stomach. And it's about the child that I have today and the rest of my family and wanting to share these beautiful memories. And I would regret it the rest of my life if I don't take these pictures. And I want you doing the same thing. Even when you're not pregnant, I want you taking pictures. Because one of the ways that we get comfortable with ourselves, we get more confident about our bodies, we have to see our body. 
and you are spending so much time avoiding the camera, avoiding the mirror, avoiding your reflection. How many times do you walk past a building that has a reflection and like you are trying your damnedest not to look? Because you're so like scared of what you're going to see. What if you just change the conversation and be like, and this is where I am right now. And it doesn't mean anything other than this is where I am. That's it. Stop putting so much meaning behind it. And again, like we should probably do um, another episode or a workshop or something around this about taking pictures. I want you taking more selfies. I want you telling your partner, your spouse, your friend, whoever's with you, hey, can you take a picture of me? I don't give a shit if you like the pictures or not. I have many pictures of myself that I don't like. But I don't sit there and attach like my life is over. Oh, my God. Guess what? We all take shitty pictures. Some you're going to like, some you're not going to like, and that's okay. But the reason I'm telling you this, the more pictures you take, the more you get in front of the camera, the more comfortable you become in your own body. You can't get confident and comfortable in your own skin until you start seeing yourself. And when you only have the experience of being in your body and not seeing it, you're avoiding mirrors, you're avoiding reflections, you're avoiding, you're, you're always the one that's like, I'll take the picture instead of getting in the picture. You can't learn about yourself and what you look like and how to, like, you have to get in front of that camera. And we're going to talk about, let's like, let's make a note to do that on a different day. Um, I think we need to do a whole like episode or something around that topic. I think it's really important. And that is not egotistical. That is not selfish. That is you learning how to have a conversation and a relationship with yourself because you give a shit enough to work on it. See, Y'all have heard me talk about this before if you've listened to a lot of my um, episodes. I have the thing, so we have the inner fat bitch. We also have the entitled fat girl. And you're running around with the entitled fat girl mindset. The entitled fat girl thinks it's all about me. It's all about me. I don't give a shit what anybody else looks like in the picture as long as I look good. Or if I look fat in the picture, nobody else better share the picture. That is the entitled fat girl. The entitled fat girl is... I'm entitled to have what I want when I want it. And being overweight and having all that emotional weight, there's this mega sense of entitlement that's come along with it, which is part of the reason you are where you are. And I can't remember if we did an episode on that, but um, y'all, I'm writing this down because I'm getting like all these ideas now. (laughs) Um, So you just have to meet yourself where you are and that's it. We don't attach any other meanings to it, okay? And everything that I'm sharing as these tips really goes back to how to change the conversation with yourself because ultimately, that's what you have to do. You have to change the conversation with yourself. And part of changing that conversation with yourself, again, is knowing you're not gonna love every picture and just because you don't love a picture doesn't mean you're a fat, disgusting piece of shit. It just means the picture sucks and you don't like it. That's it. That's all. Literally. Stop attaching so much meaning to it. Okay. Um, The next one that I'm going to say is to tell the truth of what you're really doing. Tell the truth. Tell the truth to yourself. So let me use myself here um, since we're talking about this um, gender reveal photo shoot that I've been referring to. When I saw those pictures and went, oh my God, I can't believe how big I am. I also had to tell the truth of like, okay, yeah, you're pregnant, you're gaining weight, you're almost four months pregnant, you're, you're going to be bigger, and you also know that your body packs on weight a lot faster than most when you're pregnant. That's just the way it goes. But then I said, but you haven't necessarily been eating very well every day with the quarantine, with lockdown, with pregnancy hormones, with some things that have been going on, I know 
if I'm going to be honest with myself, I've been overeating and I've been eating some things that aren't so great for me. Tell the truth of what you're doing. Because here's what you do. You act like you don't have a fucking clue why you look so overweight. This is let's talk about entitled fat girl for a second. You feel entitled to take pictures that are going to blow your mind. But yet you're door dashing every single day, you're overeating every single day, you're not getting your activities in, and then you think you're going to take this picture and be blown away at what you look like. Let's let's stop for a second and let's tell the truth of what we're actually doing. I am and I'm I am not eating healthy 7 days a week at every single meal right now. I haven't been. And I know that's a problem. And I'm trying to turn that around. I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right, here's the truth. The truth is, Amy, you haven't been eating as healthy and clean as you know you should be during your first trimester. A lot of it was like everything was disgusting me. Everything was gross. I was in my feelings a a little bit, right? I was consciously doing those things. I wasn't zombie walking through it. I knew what I was doing. And now it's like, all right, the truth of it is, yeah, you've gained way more than you should have in the first trimester. Let's turn this shit around. Let's turn it around in the second trimester. And the only thing I can do is to focus on where I'm at and where I'm going. That's it. I can't sit here and throw a fucking pity party about all the extra carbs I ate in the first trimester. What's done is done. Okay. What I can do is say, all right, the truth of it is, you know, you overate. You know that you've been eating more than you should. That's the truth. And we have to start being truthful. If we don't like what we see in the mirror and we don't like what we see in photos, Part of that is the story you're telling yourself about what the weight means. And then there's the other side of it, which is the truth also. And a lot of you build up this bullshit story in your, with yourself about, well, I mean, I've been eating healthy and I've been doing all the right things and I've been eating good and this and that. Yeah, like 40% of the time you have been. But you don't want to admit that. Let's tell the truth about what we're doing and telling the truth to yourself about all right you know what I haven't been eating as clean as I should I have been having a lot of overeats I have been binging I have been emotionally whatever your story is telling the truth of that doesn't take away that doesn't mean you have to believe the inner fat bitch chatter The inner fat bitch chatter is not the truth. Telling yourself you're a fat, disgusting bitch is not the truth. And you've got to learn how to separate the inner fat bitch talk with the hard, cold truth. And so let's talk about that, okay? Here's how it goes. All right. I'm not loving the extra rolls that I see in this picture, But I know this is just where I'm at. I know that this picture doesn't define me. I know that this picture is literally just one snap in time. And it's not my entire life. And it doesn't define where I've been. And it doesn't define where I'm going. This is just where I'm at. And I do know that, you know what? (sighs) I've been overeating a lot lately. So that's probably why I look the way I look. And I, get to take, and I get to take control to change that. You guys have so much more control and power than you are giving yourselves credit for. You get to change the conversation with yourself. Those feelings and that inner fat bitch chatter is not the end all be all. You get to change the conversation. Nobody else is forcing you to have those thoughts. And nobody else is sitting around holding you down, shoving cupcakes and carbs down your throat. You're doing that, boo. The only person that's eating the things that they're eating is you. 
So you have so much more power and control than you're letting yourself have. And so you're disempowering yourself. You're sitting around feeling like a victim. You're sitting around throwing pity parties and acting like everybody else in the world is against you. Well, it's because I'm pregnant. Well, it's because I have to work. Well, it's because the kids are home with quarantine and I have to still work and I'm stressed out. And guess what? We're all fucking stressed out. You're not special because you're stressed out. All of us are dealing with our own bullshit. And I get so fired up because I want you to understand that you have all the power and control over what you think and what goes in your mouth. And it's not because of your husband. It's not because of your kids. It's not because of your shitty job. It's not because of your hormones. It's because of you. You get to decide how you think. You get to decide to shut down the inner fat bitch. You get to decide what goes in your mouth every single day. You get to decide every single day how you want to show up and how you want to feel about yourself. And so many of you are just, hey, here I am. Take my power. Everyone take my power away. Please disempower me. Please, job, shitty person at Target, take all of my power away. That's what you're doing. And then you're seeing a picture of yourself And thinking that's like the gospel, the end all be all of who you are in your life. And you are not a fucking picture. You are not one fucking picture. You are so much more than that. And you have so much more power and control inside of you to make the life that you want for yourself. Quit being a victim of your own life. And you see, guys, for me, the reason I can turn all this around like that, I mean like that, is because I've done my work. I've constantly, constantly, constantly am focused on my emotional weight. I am constantly self-aware of what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling and redirecting and changing the conversation with myself. I don't zombie walk through my life anymore like I used to. And for so many of you, that's what you're doing. And when you're zombie walking through life, you don't even realize you're having that conversation with yourself. You don't even realize you're having all that inner fat bitch chatter going on. And... You've just been conditioned that when you see yourself in a picture and you don't look the way that you wish that you looked, that you're supposed to beat yourself up. You're supposed to beat yourself up and talk shit to yourself because that's what all the other women do. That's what you've always been around. And whenever you're with all the girls, what do they do? Oh my God, I'm so fat. I'm so gross. Look at me. Oh my God, look at my legs. And that's like ingrained in your head because you never sat back and said, wait a second. I don't have to talk to myself like this. I don't have to be like down on myself because everybody else is always down on themselves. You don't have to live the life that you're living. You are in control of what happens. What happens in terms of how you're thinking, how you're feeling, and what goes in your mouth. Yes, there are circumstances out of our control. But it's high time, it's high time that you stop allowing that to be your excuse. So we got to get real clear with ourselves. And we got to face the music and we got to just tell the truth of what we're doing. That's it. And here's the thing. Let's go back to this for a second. Telling the truth of, you know what? I've been overeating. I know it. I'm not going to sit here and and play in denial about it. I have been overeating. 
Saying that you're overeating doesn't mean I'm a fat, disgusting bitch. It means I've been consuming more food than I need, period. That's where the story ends. But you don't end it there. You keep it going with the inner fat bitch and attaching all of this meaning to it about how you're not good enough, how you're never going to be where you want to be, how you're always going to be fat and overweight. You're never going to look the way you want to look. You're never going to have the life you want to have. Instead of just telling the truth, which is I'm consuming too many calories. I'm consuming too many carbs. Because here's the deal. Actual weight loss and weight gain is not rocket science. You eat less, you move more. You want to gain weight, you eat more, you move less. That's it. It's that simple. But the reason that you are where you are with yo-yo dieting and being on the body hate shame cycle is because you attach meaning to all of it and there's all this emotion that goes on in between. Because it's not about the weight, it's about what the weight means. It's not about the food, it's about what the food does for you. Because you're using the food for something other than just food. And that's it. That's it, guys. So just to recap, when you have that moment wash over you where you feel mortified when you see yourself in a picture, and the first thought is, oh my God, I'm such a fat pig. Number one, you need to have the, like, get empowered to know You get to have that conversation. You get to change the conversation with yourself. The inner fat bitch chatter is 100% optional. So change the conversation with yourself. If you're not sure how to do that, that's one of the things that we really go into in the program. And we have a completely, we have um, the own it strategy that we use. And we have worksheets and the whole nine to like break down these thoughts that we're having. That's like one of the biggest parts of the program that we really dive into. And that's something that you can use the rest of your life. That is a skill that if you don't have it, you're going to struggle with this the rest of your life. So number one, you have to change the conversation with yourself. And remember the inner fat bitch chatter is optional. Number two is to realize that the picture and the weight you are in the picture doesn't define who you are. It doesn't define your entire life. It is literally one moment in time. And all of us, no matter what we look like, we take shitty pictures sometimes, period. Number three, stop making it just about you. And I want you to focus on what was the experience and what is the memory in that photo? And who and what are you overshadowing because you're making it all about your weight, okay? Number four is to tell yourself, this is just where I'm at. This is where I'm at. And that's it. We don't attach anything else to it. This is where I'm at. Don't delete it. Don't throw it away. This is where I'm at. Because there's going to be a point in time where you can look back and go, oh, wow, you know, I really overreacted to that picture. I can't believe I did that. Okay. Number five is tell the truth of where you are. Tell the truth of what you're doing. If you don't like what you see, if you think, you know, you actually look too overweight or you don't like the way you look, let's be truthful with ourselves. Tell the truth of what you're doing without feelings. You know what? I've been overeating too much. And I can redirect that and I can now change that. Because when you stay in denial... When you don't want to face the truth, you're going to keep doing what you've always been doing. But when you can look at it and say, you know what? All right, the truth is I've been eating a little too much lately. And starting today, I can change that. I get to change that. And that is so empowering to know that you're in control of that. No one else is forcing you to overeat. And that goes back to changing that conversation with yourself when you say, well, so-and-so made me overeat because they asked me to go out to dinner. No, they asked you to go out to dinner. You chose to overeat. Okay, so we we could save that for another day as well of like separating that out. But just tell the truth about what you're doing because that has nothing to do with the feelings that are coming up with the inner fat bitch. That is two separate things. And I'm going to share another bonus one in here that I didn't talk about yet, but I think we need to, we need to talk about this too, is 
I want you to look at that picture and I want you to say something nice to yourself. I don't care if you don't like your weight. I don't care if you see too many rolls. I don't care if you don't like your wrinkles. You look at that picture and you need to find at least one thing. If you can find more, that's great. All I'm asking is one thing. I want you to find one thing to compliment yourself on. One thing. Because what we do is we quickly just go to what we don't like. How many of you get the pictures or you get tagged or you, you look at the pictures that you just took on the phone and you do the scan? The scan is, all right, let me see how fat I look. You know what I'm talking about. We all have done that where you're like, all right, let me just do the fat scan. And you like look at the picture to see how fat do you look? How do you compare to everybody else? It's like when you walk in a room and you do the fat scan. Stop doing the fat scan and let's scan the picture to see what we love about ourselves first. Okay. This was a long episode, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope there was an, at least one nugget in here that you're able to take away and use. Again, if you are ready to learn how to change the conversation with yourself, how to do the thought work that we're talking about, I teach that heavily inside of my signature program, which is called Irresistible You. If you want to find out if you're a good fit for Irresistible You, please click on the link in the show notes and let's set up a free confidence clarity call. That way I can learn where you're at, what your goals are, and to see if you're a good fit for the program. And if you're a good fit, I will invite you to enroll. Not every person I speak to is going to be a good fit, and that's okay. And if I decide that that's not for you, then I'm going to refer you to some resources and some places that you can work on in the meantime, okay? Thank you guys for listening. I would love it if you could share this episode with a friend. Please head over to iTunes, leave a quick rating and review so that we can get other women in on the Irresistible You world. Also, catch me inside of the free Facebook group. We have a group for the podcast called the Irresistible You Podcast Discussion Group. It is totally free to join. Go on in the group. That's where I share, you know, when new episodes drop, we have conversations about the episodes and all kinds of other good stuff in between. So I hope you're doing well. I will catch you on the next episode. Until then, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.